So, I'm Chris. Uh, I have been a vulnerability researcher for well over a decade now, maybe 14, 15 years. I've uh, worked for the government doing stuff. I've worked for um, Huawei attacking their 4G, 5G kit. I've started and sold my own business. I've done a bunch of other stuff and now I head up R&D or cyber research and development at a consultancy called 6.6 .6 in London. So this webinar isn't um, sponsored by them in any way. It's not sort of anything to do with them. It's basically me demonstrating some uh, tools we've developed over the past couple of months and some of the uh, uh, surprising things I found out about email. So my research was about, or the team's research I was working with, was dissecting and understanding email security, um, how email works exactly, and what protections are in place. What we found is that it's actually possible to spoof, and I'm, when I say spoof, I mean like perfectly spoof um, in some respect. Something like 99% of email domains, this is including, including people like the CIA, uh, MI5, really large cybersecurity organizations, and pretty much almost everyone on the planet. Um, now, it's not everyone. It, it depends on something called a DMARC record that I'll explain in a second. But the point of what this, what I'm trying to sort of make out with this is a lot of people, or some, sorry, some people know that email security is broken. Some people know that it's possible to spoof emails in the way I do. But everyone thinks it's very, very, very hard and sophisticated to do it. It turns out it's actually not that difficult. So I've worked with my team to develop a tool, which is, I guess, as close to a one-click tool you can run on Linux to basically create an entire um, email spoofing infrastructure. Yeah, there will be a practical demo. Um, to do a entire infrastructure spoofing in as little effort as possible. There are, there are two requirements that you really need and I can't help it. One is you need to have some server hosted somewhere um, in the cloud, most preferably. I use something called DigitalOcean because they allow uh, reverse DNS lookups, which actually helps with your reputation when you're sending emails. Um, and it's really cheap. And the second thing you need is to just buy a domain. So this will cost some money, but it'll be probably be less than $10. It won't be very much. And it will sort of enable you to do some quite <laughs> quite surprising things with email. Anyway, so the first thing I wanted to go into is just sort of giving a background of uh, what email is. Yeah, cool. Um, it does, it does, the, the domain name doesn't really matter. But when you pick one, what, what you want to do is you want to pick one that if someone is forensically investigating it, it kind of looks a bit legitimate. Because if it says this is a really bad email, this is definitely fake and then someone does some forensic investigation later, it'll be really obvious. You want to, e like, even though that you will get these emails through, you want it to be more sophisticated or as, as I guess, convincing as possible. Um, you don't have to buy a domain that looks like the company you want to imitate. You can imitate them anyway, or for the most part, you can imitate them. You just need a domain that doesn't look overly suspicious. Anyway, so the first thing I wanted to go into <clears throat> was exactly how email works and I apologize if I'm teaching anyone something they already know but this is required so if you all you need to do with email is generally think of it being a bit like a letter a letter in an envelope and the idea is this when you have an email you write a letter and you have an address that you want to send it to and an address you want to send it from and this is where you say, dear so-and-so, this is from me. Um, I'm going to do this or I'm going to send you a subject. I'm going to send you some information. What we do with this letter in the real world is we will go and get an envelope. And we will put this letter inside the envelope. And then we put a second address. On, or a second recipi recipient address, or sorry, sending address on this, this envelope. This is a very important concept to understand. So in every single email you get, you have this process. You write a message, you put it in an envelope, 
you put a second address on the envelope and then you send the email. So this is how email works. This is the, the, the basic architectural overview of what's happening. And this is really interesting for a couple of reasons. The most important is that in every email, there is actually two addresses or two sending addresses for every single email. And the second most important thing is the receiver or the end user of this email will only ever see, for the most part, almost this is almost entirely true, will only ever see this contents on the right. Historically, what people used to do is when they were sending emails, if I just hit and do one of them, when they were sending emails, they would forge these addresses. They would just change these from addresses. And I could make it, I could send an email to anyone pretending to be someone else. I could pretend to be your boss at work. I could pretend to be your bank. I could pretend to be the CIA. I could pretend to be a lot of companies. Now, this obviously caused a massive problem because people have this implicit trust with email. That is, the sender of that email is the person you're receiving it from. So the question is, how do you stop people forging this email address? So this, this, this was sort of the problem that we had back in the 90s, a very long time ago. Well, there was a, there was a, a couple of technologies created. The first one was a technology called SPF, and I will draw this later. SPF stands for Sender Policy Framework. It makes sure that the server you're sending the email from is listed as a valid server in your DNS settings. That may be a bit confusing, but I will explain that later. The second one is DKIM, which is Domain Key Integrity Message, I believe. DKIM, to some extent, was supposed to guarantee the integrity through signatures and public keys, public private key cryptography um, th th when sending emails. It turns out it kind of, at least from what I understood, didn't really do what it was saying or in the spirit of what it was supposed to do, it kind of doesn't really work. Then there was a, another technology called DMARC, which was, oh God, I can't remember what it's called now. It's like DMARC, it was like domain records and something conformance. It was basically a bunch of policies that you set against your records and your email security to tell receiving servers how to treat your email. And then finally, there's a new one, which is called Authenticated Receiver Chain, which is supposed to cryptographically sign your email all the way from source to destination. Now, all of these things were, were, were sort of built in the hopes that they were going to stop spoofing. It turns out that for almost the most part, the three of these don't really work as the way i think they work exactly as the way that people intended them to work but i think most of the industry misunderstands what they're for or how they are supposed to work now some people are correct in in what like some people already know what i'm going to say it actually made it so arc was really nice because it actually made it easier to forge emails or at least make them look legitimate which is what i really enjoy so that's one of the things we abuse in this as well um, that I really <laughs> that I quite like. Anyway, so I'll just I'll just really quickly go through all of these technologies. So, if I say S let's talk about SPF first. The idea behind SPF, I have an email server, and this email server has an IP. The legitimate email server sits over here somewhere. It also has an IP. So if I use something like if I want to send an email, I'm just going to use the CIA.gov uh, as the email. If I have an email address and I want to send an email from the CIA.gov, what I would do is I would send this email out to a receiving server. And what this receiver server will do is it will, it will check this IP address that it received the email from it would do a DNS lookup of the CIA domain. And in that DNS lookup of that CIA domain would be a bunch of allowed IP addresses. What, how this works or the, why this works is because the IP address listed in here will be the IP address of this server. But because I don't control the domain, my IP address is not in this list. 
So the receiving email server will block sending this email. That's the basic idea. You send an email from a particular address. The receiving email server will receive that address, in this case, agentsmith.cia.gov. It will look up the domain, it will look up in the domain cia.gov, and it will look for the allowed IP addresses or the allowed sending servers for that for that for that um, address and IP address. If it is not on that list, it will block it. So that's the first one. However, if you remember what I said about previously about the addresses on email on sorry on emails, you have an address that sits in the contents of the email and you have an envelope address that sits outside the email. SPF doesn't stop you spoofing or pretending to be someone else in the email contents. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, they're added as text records, right? So, SPF only covers the envelope address. And what this means, if I'm sending an email, and this is the envelope, and I have my address and my letter here, and I've got a to and a from. The receiver of this email address in Gmail or whatever it is, or you know, Outlook, they've got their inbox. They will only ever see, by default, and generally almost all of the time, they will only ever see these two addresses here. The SPF validation will only ever be carried out for the address on the envelope. And remember, unless you dig down into the contents of the email, which most people don't do and look for the original email, you will not be able to find that SPF record. And it's actually even worse because in the SPF record, what you do is, this is why we have a domain, you can forge or put your own domain in there. This is why we want it to look legitimate. You can put your own domain in this and your end user will receive an email and they will get an SPF pass. And you will see this later, which means the first anti-spoofing technology or supposed anti-spoofing technology, at least from an end user's perspective, which frankly is all email really is important for, right? Doesn't prevent email spoofing. And this moves us on to the second point, which is called DKIM. And the, the, the general idea is it still, uses, it still uses DNS to sort of verify stuff. And it still only works on the envelope address, but it works a bit differently. So what you have is your sending email server and a private key. And what happens is you also have a receiving email server, the person you want to send to. What you do when you send an email, you put a from address on here. You put a from address in the contents of your email. Remember, they can be different. And then you use this private key on your server to sign or place a digital signature. I don't want to say on the end, but in this email to verify that the contents of this email haven't changed in transit. And what happens now is you send this email address to the receiving server. It takes this email address, this email you received, strips off this key at the bottom or the signature, does a DNS request in the same way that SP, almost the same way that SPF works. It will do a lookup for this DNS it will find a public key for that domain. Remember the example we are using here in this from address is cia.gov. It will download the public key and it will validate the signature that's on this email. What this was supposed to do is to make is to it was to ensure that between the sending server and the receiving server it wasn't tampered with. And it kind of doesn't really work like that because again, the problem again is here. This DKIM record only protects the from address of the envelope. Actually, it doesn't even really protect it. It will only take its information from the from address of the email. But again, I just use my attacking from address and I forge all of the contents within this email. So when the receiver gets the email, 
the entire thing has a SPF pass record, it has a DKIM pass record. The third technology we were looking at, so actually, wrong one. So the third technology we were looking at, if SPF and DKIM doesn't stop spoofing, at least from an end user's perspective, was something called ARC. Now ARC is called Authenticated Receiver Chain. And the idea behind ARC was this. You would have people like MailChimp or intermediary uh, email servers that would deliver email for you, and you would have receiving service. This would be the sender server, and this would be the receiver server. And what you would have is you would have some server that sits in the middle. And the general idea is this. When you send an email, it will go through the first server and then onto the second server. How many hops? I think it's up to like 50 hops. And that's how you deliver your email. But at each point, these, e these email servers will perform a SPF check, a DKIM check and a DMARC check. And they will place the results into the contents of the email. So the first email server will add a third check. The second email or the email server will receive the first, oops, it will receive the first email, will do its own check and add that on. And then finally, when you get to the receiving email server, you will have one signature two signature and then it will put on a third signature. This is actually quite important because what this allows me to do is to place things like fake D what's called a fake D mark record or a D mark pass into the email without actually having control over the domain. So what I can do, and this is Google is the only people is the only provider I know that uses it at the moment, but what, what happens is I basically put on this, this check, this header, and I lie about all of the contents in this email record. This email record gets to Google, and then they validate my fake record. So they say the check was good, and this has a DMARC pass, a DKIM pass, and a separate SPF pass in it. And then when it moves on to the third server, it will validate that the second and the third, or sorry, the first and the second, uh, email signatures were valid and what this does is this actually passes down between each hop this corrupts or this um, incorrectly signed record to state that by the way your um, your email is valid even if it isn't and each one of these things increases the reputation and the likelihood of delivery of your email to someone's inbox from a fake address now, this, all of this stuff to set up is quite complicated, so we've basically put it into a tool to make it work. The final piece of the puzzle is actually the only thing that stops people being able to spoof emails. So what you have is this. You have the SPF check, which we can... We, I don't want to say we can forge it, but we can put a correct SPF pass on the email. We have a DKIM record, which we can put a correct DKIM pass on the email. We have an ARC record where we can put a forged ARC, an ARC header on the email, which is then verified by Google whoever, or whoever else the receiver is. And the third bit is a technology called DMARC. Now DMARC tells the receiving email server how to treat that email when it receives it. And what's really interesting about DMARC is if you do not have a DMARC record, it just permits spoofing. If you have one of your fields, it's you have a P field and you have an SP field. So P in this in this sense would be would cover something like CIA.gov, the primary domain. SP would be the subprimary or the subdomain. So you can have things like uh, security dot uh, CIA dot gov. If either of these settings are set to none, and many of them are, this tells the receiving email server to ignore any failed DMARC pass, any failed DMARC record. It's kind of like saying we explicitly permit spoofing for our domain. That's what it's doing.
It's saying we we, we allow you to spoof our email, to spoof our address. There's a third piece as well. Yeah, so if so, that's a good point. So if you have a, so there are two other options. You have a quarantine, and you have a reject. Reject is probably the best one I would say. If you have a reject on your domain for your DMARC record, what it will do is it will just block the entire email from being received in the user's inbox. What's interesting as well, though, is that we have seen it where there will be a reject on P here for the primary domain, but the subdomain has a non-record on it. This means that you can still spoof the subdomain. There is also a third option. So, 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 so you have the option of the DMARC record doesn't exist, which makes it very easy to forge. There can be a P equals non, which makes it easy to forge. And SP equals non makes it easy to forge. People misspell things like reject. So they will do things like spell it like, oh, oh God, I can't even spell myself. They will say R-E-G-E-C-T, but this is a misspelling. So it actually counts as... Uh, you know, a, a non-valid or a DMARC record doesn't exist. A lot of a lot of domains I've seen with this, or the domain won't be correct and it won't parse correctly, which is again like having no DMARC record. There is a, I guess, final and fourth parameter. This there is a percent PCT value. Now PCT by default, if it's not present on the email or sorry on the DMARC record, it will set itself to one hundred. What 100 means, <laughs> what 100 means is that it wants you to, ch I guess, it's technically apply the policy to 100% of my emails. But what it's what it kind of means is that I want you to put to permit zero or check 100% of my emails for uh, spoofing. We actually regularly see this value either set to none. So what none means is don't check my emails for spoofing or permit them. Now, what it does is it doesn't actually permit things like reject. It, it Sometimes we've seen it act incorrectly. Um, Yahoo is a really good example of this. But what it will do is it should change your reject to a quarantine. Or if you have a quarantine, it will change it back down to a non, which again permits your email. The, the problem with this is, is that if you just do a search for... A domain on the internet it rounds about 70 to 80 percent of all domains do not have a DMARC record at all which makes them very easy to spoof the remaining DMARC records are either incorrectly spelled incorrectly formatted they have a non policy they have a non subdomain policy or the percentage value is less than 100 which means there is a chance that your email will get permitted when you add all of that together if you look at the top 1 million domains this is i don't want to say people like facebook are vulnerable because they may or may not be that you have to investigate closer but 97 to 99 percent of all domains in the world are vulnerable to this which means i can send you or a lot of people an email address from you in your company or your boss in your company and this gets through Gmail inbox filters, it gets through Outlook email, email filters, it gets through Demarkly, it gets through Mimecast, it gets through Fortinet, it gets through everything and it works. Yeah, I haven't got to that yet, I was going to do some demos. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of the theory, you'll see, you'll see what I mean as I go along. So if I just do you, if I just switch over, uh, where have I gone, so if I just switch over here. So what did so what did on DMARC do then? Does it actually did it actually get the um, did it correctly set your DMARC records? Because I'm quite interested. Cause I've, I've spoke to a few people who said, "Oh, I've used this tool to set my DMARC records." Yeah. So so like, what's really cool about DMARC as well is it provides you abilities to put in email addresses. So even if your policy is set to none and it permits a spoof email through, it will tell you where that email came from and who it got sent to. It's quite nice. Um, but you, if, if you have any of these settings within your DMARC record, you can still get spoofing through. Yeah, so DMARC does re reporting. It does quite nice stuff. Um, it, will, it will give you a list of um, people that have tried to spoof you. 
um, it will send you an email. It will send you an email. I think it's every day or every, or you can specify how long. And it will say, these people have tried to spoof you today. Um, these are your settings. And it will just give you a nicely, nicely formatted report. And you can use things like Agari and Mimecast and Demarkly to sort of do the formatting for you. So what I wanted to do is just show you an example of what each one of these things look like. So the tool I use, uh, I can't type, is dig, because I like dig. And all you do is you type dig, dmark, and type cia.gov. And what you want to do is you want to be you want to be looking up the record underscore dmark for that domain, typing in txt because it's a txt record, and then I just type short to make it look nice. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to zoom in a bit because it might be a bit hard to see. Cool. Actually, I'll probably do it a bit higher than that. Uh, so 36. Cool. There we go. Can you? Oh, I don't know. I have a weird keyboard. I can't be bothered. I'll break it. I know I will. <laughs> um, so with this, obviously, like I said, you do dig dmark cia.gov txt short. This says that the cia.gov did not have a dmark record, which means they're a prime candidate for spoofing. Another record I like to look up, just for examples, um, is mi5.gov.uk. So this demonstrates what a p equals none looks like. So even though mi5 do have a dmark record, the p equals none here says that we explicitly allow you to spoof our email address. And what's nice about this here is that you can see that it doesn't have any email addresses to send reports to. So we can do this without being detected. Something like some pe like a lot of people will include an email here, um, but at the same time, they will um, just basically not check it. I want to say this just to make it clear. I'm not picking on any particular company. I just know like particular vulnerabilities and particular configurations for these domains. Uh, I so I use um, uh, is it Blue Ocean just because they like I said anything that allows you to host in the cloud that allows you to do a reverse um, DNS record. I will show you setting it up. Um, I, well, I'll show you for the most part setting it up because I don't want to delete my box because it's all working um, because the demo gods will kill me, right? Uh, but yeah, any anything on the cloud that you can use to host um, and have a reverse DNS lookup on it will will help help you immensely when it comes to your proof score. A, a good example of a, uh, a company that I guess hasn't quite figured out what's going wrong. Um, is it pwc.com or co.uk? So, oh God, I typed that in wrong. So pwc.co.uk, unless they've changed it today, has a DMARC record and you can see that their primary domain is set to reject, which is good. I believe if I look up .com, here's an example, but their .com address, as I've detailed here, it does have a reject for their primary domain, but it doesn't have a reject for their subdomain, which means I can spoof their subdomain. I'll try EF, whatever that is, EF.com, EF.com. Uh, again, so problem. So you can spoof uh, ef.com subdomains but you can't spoof their primary domain so I could type so I could send an email address from anyone at something like security.ef.com and that will work does that answer your question it's vulnerable because of this here this makes it vulnerable your percentage so this by default um, will be 100 but obviously you've explicitly set it which is good some domains aren't very good um <laughs> so let me let me pick one i know of so if i do dig uh dmark dot yes that's exactly what it means security.ef.com could be spoofed so here's another one number 10 so this is a number 10 downing street email address they have a reject policy now what's supposed to happen when this percentage here that they say 
we want we permit 75 percent of people um or we, we only apply our strictest policy against 75 percent of email addresses but p equals reject what it should do is it should change this reject for 75 percent of emails to a quarantine but some email addresses don't work properly what is mate i have no idea what the point of having this is i have n absolutely no idea why you can tell people to explicitly allow spoof email addresses i have no idea why you can tell people to i have all of these email addresses but i only want you to check zero percent yep that is exactly how it works i don't know why it exists i'm just telling you that it does exist right that is it just does exist it is for sampling um but no one ever looks at it again <laughs> like they do it once and just ignore it <laughs> which is really nice if you really want to pretend to be someone else um oh yeah exactly exactly one company and you know who you are and i live quite close to them um if you figure out where i live you'll figure out they are so they had a a vulnerable domain so they had a, they had a vulnerable uh, dmark record oh uh, shut up <laughs> i sent i sent an email address as like to spoof their domain right and what was really good about that is that they knew who spoofed it, which company spoofed it, because I sent it to like an email address with our company name in it. And then the next day, all of their records were fixed. It was all reject for everything. Um, and it's kind of nice because number one, like, yeah, they were vulnerable, but they were the only company that noticed, which I, you know, I've got to commend them. And number two, they know what I did. And that's my favorite thing they know that i did that and like you can't take it away and i've still got the email it's just good fun it's kind of like a bit of a game when i was doing it <laughs> but no like fair play to them they fixed it they were the only ones that noticed a lot of other companies uh mainly like even fish even people that are supposed to specialize in anti-phishing and anti-spoofing emails have vulnerable uh domains which is quite funny and they don't notice anything like security companies um are just as bad as everyone else the, the people that aren't bad um like games companies weirdly are like really good and i'm guessing anyone that has had a problem with spoofing in the past games companies being one of them um are incredible uh are like incredibly good for having these defenses which is really really nice Ah, oh, game companies are all over their anti-spoof and they're fantastic at it. Any, anyone that has, uh, I guess, is susceptible to this type of thing um, and has had a lot of this in the past is generally quite good at preventing this. Uh, well, I'm just about to get onto the tool. Yeah. The other, the other um, yeah, so I'm just going to the tool, just wanted to show you how it looks. The way, the way to fix this, <laughs> in all honesty... Is, is you can make a really easy job by just set, just set, like creating a txt record with dmark and just put those two values dmark one uh, p equals reject and it will just fix the problem like it's an incredibly easy fix there are some um like a lot of nuances to uh, really be aware of because if you're someone that uses like mailchimp or someone like sendgrid for an intermediary sender what will happen is it will block all of your emails for that domain so you need to be very careful you need to get things like your dkim and spf set up for every single server that you possibly ever send an email from for your domain and then you need to put your record sorry you need to put your public key and the uh what do you call it the selector for the dkim record on each one of your servers and it's quite annoying If you do DMARC use reject as long as you have SPF to your third party mailer, it works. Um, well, it might if I think it's if you just have SPF, I'm not sure if it works with DKIM or not as well. But I'd like it becomes really nuanced and it can become very problematic. So I like while the fix is easy, you can just reject everything. Be very careful if you have a complex email structure because you might just end up blocking all of your outgoing email or a significant majority of it. Anyway, uh, everyone wants to actually see the tool being used. So, 
I will provide the GitHub when I put this video online for people to use. It's not too difficult to understand. Um, there are just there are just like three th three. I mean, the three things you need to be aware of. Right, you need a place to host it in the cloud, preferably with a reverse DNS re uh, DNS record. Um, you want a place. You want a domain. The domain that we chose is just a really stupid one from a couple of weeks ago. Kind of doesn't really mean anything. Um, and then you just need to be able to host the server. Right. So, let me just exit this. Make sure I can get onto my actual server. Cool. If I move my stuff off to the right, it's because I'm looking at my emails and I don't want anyone to look at my private emails. I will note when they have... Uh, so, there's also a problem here. If you set this infrastructure up um, with a brand new IP address, there will be an element of reputation. So, things like spam house and uh i guess other other email security providers will block you and you will have to work on your reputation a bit um or you can do what i do and just abuse the send grid api which is really 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 nice i won't be doing that tonight but it's very easy to do and what because send grid doesn't actually prevent you from sending emails to someone else which is really really nice so you basically just get SendGrid's API key. You get an API key from SendGrid, put it in our tool, you send that, and then you get the re the IP reputation. Uh, oh yeah, so that you get the sending reputation of SendGrid. Basically, SendGrid is an open relay with a really high um, reputation, and you can just make an API key, and it just works out of the box, which is I just think is fantastic. Like fantastic of SendGrid to do that. Um, it makes it very easy for my me to spoof people. Cool. So what I'm going to do. So the service I use to do this, you don't have to use GoDaddy, you can use whatever you want. You just need to be able to configure a domain record. Um, just need to be able to configure a domain record with uh, Cloudflare. Actually, you know what, I'm going to come off here because I know there's some private information and I don't get myself doxxed. Oh, so let me just go to my domain. Does anyone have questions while I just flick around on my interface? Oh my god, what is it doing? Oh, is, is GoDaddy broken? It keeps saying error. Hold on, I think I've got it. So in my domain settings for my DNS, um, at least on GoDaddy, what you want to do is you want to look for anywhere with your managed DNS and you want to look for where you can change your name servers. So what we're gonna, all we're going to do with a 123reg GoDaddy any domain purchaser is you're going to buy a domain and you're going to look for the setting where you update the name servers. Then what you need to do if I just come out of this again, because I don't know what's on there. It just let me enter my username and password on Cloudflare. Excellent. Eh? Cool. So remember, we have our domain manager, and this is GoDaddy. Works the same as anything else. What we have here is, like I said, you can change the name servers if you want, GoDaddy, anything else that works. You go and create a domain on Cloudflare, and as you're setting it up and you type in your domain here, um, this is our domain, it will tell you to enter the domain you want to register with Cloudflare. Um, so for this one, we've got called Cheeky Breaky. Ask Uggy why they call this. I'm just going to delete all of these records because the tool will set all of this thing up for you. So what you need to do is you need to enter those name servers on from the Cloudflare name servers into your uh, whatever your interface is here, like I said, GoDaddy. And then it should generally be after five minutes to an hour. It should actually reconfigure it to put doing all your DNS through Cloudflare. Cool. Just let me delete these for the demo later. That's the first thing you need to do. You you shouldn't and if you have any if you have any uh, domain records in there, just delete them all. Just do exactly what I just did. 
The second thing you're going to do is when you're in Cloudflare and your domain has been registered with it, so you click up in the upper right here, go to my profile, API tokens, create token, this edit zone DNS here, you click use template, you leave this as, as default and then in the second line here you just check it should say include specific zone and you click the domain you want to mess around with and then here you click create token and it will give you a token on the next page and you need to save that token because we're going to enter into the settings in a bit so I'm just going to delete that excellent and that's all we need to do on Cloudflare Cloudflare is done that's all we need to do the final piece of the puzzle is once you've got your domain purchased, you've registered it with Cloudflare, you've got your D, you've got your token. Um, you need to go, and like I said, DigitalOcean. I don't know, do I keep saying Blue Ocean? I can't remember. You can go to your DigitalOcean server and you set one up. I'm not going to set one up now because I don't want to lose the IP reputation I've got. Oh my God, this takes so long to load. Oh my God. Hurry up. Oh, I've got $100 promo credit. I'm actually not paying for any of this. This is nice. Cool. The next thing you do is when you've set up DigitalOcean and you get to your domain panel, you'll see this here. You click Create Droplets. And this is what I do. Just select Ubuntu. Basic. Regular Intel with SSD. And I just check, pick the cheapest one. Pick a location. Now there is something to be said here. DigitalOcean has some known bad autonomous system numbers and known bad IP addresses. So if your email doesn't work when you send it the first time, what you probably need to do is just go back and do this process again. It's a bit annoying, but eventually you'll get a good IP address. Um, we did it three times last night for someone and it worked in the end. Um, but it's, I can't help it if People like me abuse DigitalOcean. Um, sometimes they get blocked. Next, set up an uh, SSH key or a password authentication. And this is the really important bit. In DigitalOcean, you'll see choose a host name here. This host name needs to be the address here, your, your, your actual domain name address that you've purchased. That's what I will do is copy my cheeky breaky i'll put it in there and then you just click create and this will just go in the background and it'll go and set up your uh, digital ocean server for you and then you should just be able to ssh to it and that's as difficult as it will be but as i said i've already got one um that i don't want to go through and set all of this up like i did previously What was the bit that you have to do? Oh, for the for the host name. Let me go back into it. Yeah, so the host name. So that's what does your reverse pointer record. So the host name here. It'll say host name down here. This needs to be your domain name. So in my instance, this would be cheekybreaky.com. And what that will do is Blue Ocean will go and set a PTR record up for you for that domain. So when I do hostname or I do reverse DNS lookup, it will come up with this IP address. And you set it there, click create, click, uh, use create, and Bob's your uncle, right? It'll, it should all just set up. So like I said, you should have everything set up. You should have a domain you've purchased. You register it on Cloudflare by updating your name servers and remember cloudflare is free as well so you, you update your name servers for your godaddy or 123 reg or whoever you used to purchase you set that up on cloudflare once your domain is working on cloudflare you go and create an api key the api key for your domain so you say i want to use the template to edit the dns zone get the api key save the api key it will only print it once i can't stress that enough Go to some other provider that supports reverse PTR records. As I said, DigitalOcean supports it. DigitalOcean is cheap. When you're setting it up, DigitalOcean in this example, or whichever other provider you're using, make sure that that PTR record is set up by entering your domain name in the appropriate field. It might be a bit more annoying than that, 
But what you will get in the end is a server or a droplet in this instance for a particular IP address. So this is my IP address. And what you need to do, I use, I go from Windows. Um, I could type in the address SSH root at this address and it will log me in and I put in my password, but I've already got this set up with my key. Um, so what I do is I type SSH spoof and it will drop me into my uh, my mail ser my server. So this is now running on DigitalOcean. Um, I've got my API key and everything should be set up. Registrar's never dropped a main. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Cool. We should have everything in place now for just configuring the server in basically one click, which is quite nice. I'm just going to go off screen again because I don't want you to steal my API keys. Uh, oh, I actually do have my send grid on there. Ooh, let me... Just don't want to show you my API keys. The final bit is to get mail spoofer onto your server. Um, the way I use it is I use SCP, um, so SCP R to recursively copy a directory, desktop mail spoofer um, spoof slash temp, and this will uh, down this will upload the uh, files to your uh, DigitalOcean server. Cool. So I just copied that to temp. I've already got it on there, but I just wanted to show you. So I now have my temp directory there. Um, but I also have my pre-configured mail speed for setup. All you do now is you have this file called settings.env. By default, the domain will be example.com. You need to change this bit to your domain. The track domain will be click.example.com. All you need to do is just change the example.com bit to your domain. And then finally, you'll have a return path address, um, which is the from address or the envelope address we're sending from. And you just need to change this to your domain from example.com. The final piece of the puzzle is that, that API key that we copied before. We copied it from Cloudflare. You just need to paste this API key here. And that's all you need to do. You check, you download, you, you upload this and change everywhere it says example.com to your domain that you own. And then change your Cloudflare API key to be the key that pointed was pointed to by Cloudflare. Everyone good with that? Anyone want me to go for anything else? I'll show you how this works in a second. So the, the really bad thing to say is about this is that I've seen a lot of DEF CON talks. I've seen a lot of email providers say that it's impossible to... Sp I don't want to say it's impossible to forge, but like... If a domain has an SPF record, um, you can't spoof it. That's not true. Uh, DKIM protects it. That's not true either. Um, e even even bad in some cases, people say if it's got an SPF record and it passes a DKIM record, then it gives it a high reputation, which it shouldn't do because that's just not true because you can forge the entire thing. Or you, or you don't forge it. You provide your own valid one. It's just not the same as what the user sees in that email inbox. Cool. So let me move my settings0 file to settings.env, which is my actual valid one with my actual API keys in it. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is sudo at, or just actually apt update and oops, apt install docker-compose, but I've already got them so it won't do anything. Um, you just need Docker Compose on your system. And what you will have is the settings end file that you've updated the domains in. You'll have your API key and you'll have this Docker Compose file. You don't actually need any of this other stuff. It's just lying around. This is just part of the GitHub or of the Git profile. And then all you do is you type Docker Compose up. And this will go and grab all the images 
and it will set all of the DNS records on Cloudflare for you. Although I bet it's not going to work now, is it? So let me just go to my domain just to check it. And of course, my site's not up. I have no idea why that's not coming up. <laughs> oh, the first time every time, demigods, demigods. Give me a second to figure out why this is a whinging. Oh, it might be. I may have put in the. I may have not commented out the files properly. Uh, API key seems fine. It looks good to me. Just start that again. See if that does any better. Uh, it works this time. I don't know why it didn't work the first time. I needed to change my, my API key. Cool. So this should be working now. Excellent. So what this has done when I've typed Docker Compose up is in my Cloudflare. I refresh it. Oh, it's actually not set my MX record. This is my old version. The new version will do this as well. So I actually need to add an extra record. Uh, in. You don't need to do this for the new version, um, it will automatically do it, I just have the older version. Oof, go away. Cool, anyway. So what we have is an MX domain record would have been set up for you, um, obviously your A record would have been set up for you. Um, you have this click, which is to do the um, tracking and uh, when people click on your malicious links. It has an SPF record set up for you. It has a domain key record set up for, set up for you. And it has a DMARC record set up for you. And if you go to your domain, 3333 login, uh, default password admin go fish, which is my default, but I'm going to immediately change it to something else. Cool, I've changed my password, so no one can change my password now. So you need, just, you need a digital ocean or equivalent. Um, you, you can technically do this without Cloudflare, but the nice thing about Cloudflare is it just we do all of that API stuff for you, so you don't need to worry about it. Um, and just a domain. You, know, you, don't, you don't need GoFish, so GoFish, the default, it will just set it up for you. So that's actually your server. Um, the default uh, password is admin GoFish, uh, P-H-I-S, right? Um, the problem with that is, though, is like... <laughs> There is a later version of GoFish that gives you like randomizes your password on um, configuration, but it doesn't work with Caddy, the reverse DNS, uh, the reverse DNS proxy, which is a bit annoying. So, like I said, you just need a domain registered on Cloudflare with an API key that you make, and you need DigitalOcean or an equivalent that could do a reverse PTR record. And then what you do is you run the server, and that will with the API key, and it will configure. And the accounts for you. So this is our fully working uh, spoof infrastructure. So this should have an SPF. So the first thing we're going to do is, if I just copy my domain, is just do a test by sending an email address from me. So I'll just send it from uh, chris at cheekybreaky.com. We're only doing a test. You can put whatever uh, profile name you want in here. The host, in the host, there is an internal DNS record um, for postfix. So you always just type postfix25. That's all you need to do. And then I should be able to just send a test email to uh, when I log into my personal email, I'm going to do it off screen and then I'll bring it on screen. So what this will have done is it will have sent an example email because once you log in, you go to sending profiles, new profile, um, set up a test. Uh, and then I should. Da, 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 I'm actually logged into the wrong account. 
It's always logged into the wrong account. Oh. It's been very slow. Come on, all email, all email, all email. Oh my god, this has been so slow. <laughs> Come on. I think my internet's really laggy. I don't know. Okay, cool. So if I go to all my email. Oh my god. My laptop is on fire right now. Uh, yes, someone knows the AS, AS domain that um, gives bad IP addresses. Um, I can't remember which one it is, but you can look it up and see if it's in that IP address, which is a bit annoying. Um, but this is the email we received. Obviously, it's from my legitimate account. Um, if we go into the show original here, we will have an SPF pass, a DKIM pass and a DMARC pass. The other thing I'm going to do is just quickly zoom in to show you the uh, the ARC message. So this only works for Gmail at the moment. Maybe other providers do it, but I'm not sure. So this here um, is actually completely forged. So there's a Lua script. Uh, yeah, so I think it was AS14061. I think that's the bad one. Um, so the, the, the forged ARC is here. Um... And it basically says that we have approved the cheekybreaky.com domain uh, from this IP address. And when you come to the top here, what you'll see is that because this is legitimate email, you'll see that there's a DKIM pass, an ARC pass, an SPF pass, and a DMARC pass. Um, you can also see our um, DMARC records there. Um, and then you will see within ARC pass, so this is now, this is now in Google, so Google has verified that this is correct. Um, in some regard and it says there's an SPF pass, there's a DKIM pass um, and there's an EMAP pass but remember th this is all forged, it doesn't look forged at the moment but it is all forged. What we can do now is start putting random domains in here that we know are vulnerable um, so I can send in CIA.gov, I can send an email address from me from the CIA, I can just do a test this is a really bad reputation email because it doesn't have like an it, the email headers aren't formatted correctly, oh god but it should still be good. Put it to my all. Uh, where are you? My inbox. My all mail. God's sake. Cool. So this is my email address I've just got from the CIA. Um, the interesting thing about Google is, and this is only Google Web Client, it's not anything else. Google Web Client um, actually uses this via. It tells you who it went via. And because it's going via my um, domain, and I don't have an SPF and DKIM record for the, for the CIA, or an SPF for a DKIM record, this says that it's actually gone via me. Now, for the most part, people wouldn't recognise this. They would just see, oh, it's from the CIA. And the other thing is, is that if I click reply, um, it will actually send it to the CIA. So be careful when you do that, because you actually be sending stuff to the CIA. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it does it does actually come from the legitimate uh, CIA.gov address. Um, but remember, this looks really dodgy because it says, you know, this is a spam email address. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is set up a campaign. So I'm just going to set up a landing page. This is a bit pointless. Um, that's for when you're like trying to get people to land on a particular spoof email. We're going to do like a new template. So I'm just going to say this is the CIA template. Um, new recruits. Hi. We have new recruits waiting. And I'll just say from Asian Smith, right? Just going to send this as a template. So this is the actual email contents. No, Proton Mail doesn't send so anything. So Proton Mail does show stuff, but only if they have a DMARC record you pass, it will say this looks suspicious. But if they don't have a DMARC record, which is like seventy percent of the time, it doesn't show anything. 
Oh, cause the, the, I mean, this gets through Mimecast. It gets through like it gets through Demarkly. It gets through everything I've seen. It gets through Google. Um, I'm going to set up a group for my emails. I'm going to do a Yahoo one. I think a Yahoo one, don't I? So I've got a Yahoo. I'll, I'll do Gmail and Yahoo just to show you as an example. Um, so every time I send a new campaign, it's going to be sending to my Christopher.Powell email address, and it's going to be sending it to my Yahoo email address just to show you the difference. And then the final bit, once you've got our template, we've got our group to send to, is just start a campaign. So I'm just going to call this test test zero. Um, we're going to use the CIA template. We're going to use the sending profile. Oh, I guess I haven't sent, saved the sending profile. So I need to come back here. I need to set up a CIA sending profile. CIA uh, sending profile. Uh, agent Smith. Agent.smith at CIA.gov. Postfix 25. And we're just going to save that. And go back to our campaigns. New campaign. Uh, test zero. And I'm just going to send it. And this should send me an email address to both of those. Now let me just log in uh, to my Yahoo as well. Cool. And as you can see, straight through to my inbox. Um, didn't come through. Yeah. <laughs> so this did. So this didn't get spammed. Um, the first two did get spammed off screen. Sorry, I did say I was going to show. You. So these two got spammed um, mainly because there's no headers. Like all the headers are misformatted. But the, the, this one doesn't get spammed. And this comes down to like IP reputation. Like I said, if you go and get a SendGrid uh, API key and you put the SendGrid API key um, in our tool with settings and file, it'll get through every time. But this one got through. Like I said, again, it does it does say via cheeky breaky, but it does actually come from the CIA.gov, right? Um, so that is that is kind of the problem we're talking about. If I actually let me come off here because I don't want to see on Yahoo because I think I've got some personal stuff in there as well. That did get through as well, which is nice. Uh, right, so this is what it looks like on Yahoo. It actually just looks like it comes from the CIA. You would never be able to tell the difference. This is what it's like most of the time. Um, yeah, Outlook doesn't show anything either, no. It doesn't show anything. And like, it's like 80 to 85% of government domains are like this. And like, 97% <laughs> of every domain to 99% of every domain is like this. Uh, let me get some other examples I've done. Um, if I do MI5, so let's do a sending profile of MI5. Uh, MI5. I'll just use I'll just use the the same template every time. Uh, Agent dot Smith. What I should do at mi five dot gov dot uk. If if it's not working, like if your if your AS is not working, like just try it because it might work. Because like I've said, I've like. Like so we were messing with it last night with someone, and it seemed to work for some reason. And um, it just it was a bit problematic, but it did work in the end. Um, I'm now just going to duplicate that campaign. Um, going to test one. Um, we're using the CIA email template. I'm going to send it from MI5 this time uh, to the same email addresses. Uh, come on, Yahoo. So it got through to Yahoo, fine, absolutely fine. Uh, this comes from mi5.gov.uk. And the other thing you can do, right, is just check it, mi5, type it in, .gov.uk. Uh, that is literally the mi5 domain um, that it comes through. So you can spoof people in mi5. Uh, let me just go into my Gmail just to show you that again. Come to all mail. Uh, does it come through? Oh, it's taking a long time to go through to Gmail, which is a bit annoying. Uh, still, fuck's sake, still made in. Oh, Gmail's been a bit slow. Gmail's been a bit slow. For some reason, the other one's working fine. I think that was good. And get through. Yeah, it did. Excellent. Cool. Oh, God. Uh, 
yes, there was some private stuff. Anyway, so this got through to my inbox again, so mi5.gov.uk. Yeah, cheeky breach, so my domain is cheekybreaky.com, right? The, the, the interesting thing here is, is, I'll just show you what I said. So this is the MI5 domain, um, and it's got the pass. So remember, um, actually, you know what? Let me go back and check the CIA one first. I should have done that, shouldn't I? So if I come here with the CIA domain, and I go to CIA.gov, we can see that there's an SPF pass, so this is my IP address. Um, there's a DKIM pass. Um, if I just zoom in here, you will see an ARC pass as well. So, th so th remember, this, this header here was actually added on and authenticated and signed by Google themselves. Now, in the ARC pass, you have an SPF pass, uh, a DKIM pass, and a forged DMARC pass. So Google has taken my fake ARC header and has re-signed it for me, so it looks more legitimate. So if, if you can imagine someone who wasn't that sophisticated with email sees that there's an SPF pass with this, will go, oh, SPF passed. Uh, DKIM's passed. Yeah, sure, it says my domain. This is why I tell people to use one that looks a bit less suspicious. Um, but if you look for things like ARC pass, you'll have an ARC pass, um, and then you will also have a DMARC pass here. Remember, this is a fake DMARC pass. This is why I think ARC actually makes it look like makes it more insecure because it like adds more of these like signed headers that Google has approved to say that this is a legitimate email domain from a legitimate IP address. Um, let's show you the subdomain one. So we'll do PricewaterhouseCooper PwC. Uh, I hope I get the right one. So PwC subdomain because their primary domain was fine, but their subdomain wasn't. So we just send it from uh, no reply at uh, security dot pwc dot com post fix twenty five. Just save that profile and I'll send another campaign out. Test two, we'll use the same template. We'll send it from PWC. I hope this is the right one because I can't remember if .co.uk was runnable, this other one. So, come on, Yahoo. Cool, straight through. So, again, uh, straight to inbox, no problem. Um, no reply security.pwc.com. So you go to PwC, it'll be PricewaterhouseCooper. But because that subdomain is there, yeah, that I mean, kind of. Um, when it comes to that, like, <laughs> yeah, like if someone's if someone's doing this, then you've got to expect to get flagged eventually, and you just have a reputation. But the nice thing about this is like. Because it's like an all-encompassing Docker tool, you can just like tear it down and rebuild it. And if you've got that Cloudflare API, you don't need to go and set the records up. And remember, it does a let's, let's encrypt as well. So whenever I'm on my... Oh, good, where did it go? Uh, if I go to my cheeky, breaky address. So remember, this has got like proper let's encrypt as well. So this is all encrypted. Um, the, so yeah, we, we've, we've spoofed PwC, we've spoofed uh, MI5, we've spoofed the CIA... Um, remember, PwC was interesting because they rejected accounts from PwC.com, but they didn't reject accounts from P from security or another subdomain at PwC.co.uk.com. Uh, GitHub is vulnerable as well, GitHub.co.uk, but not GitHub.com. Uh, and you can just look, so let's just do dig, uh, dmark.pwc.com, txt plus short. Because they have this SP equals none, because they have a subdomain, um, I can spoof the subdomain. Does anyone else have any other domains they want me to try? NCC. I think NCC are okay. Uh, I reckon Mimecast will be okay. D D Mark. What, what's their actual what's the NCC group? I think NCC group are okay. I think they were one of the first ones I looked at. But but then you can do other stuff like look for ncc.co.uk. NCSC are fine. Tried NCSC. The NSA are fine as well. We've I've already done them. Uh GCHQ is fine as well. Checked. TXT of shorts. 
So they're set to reject. The interesting thing as well is if we just do .co.uk, I suspect they'll be fine. So what's interesting now is um, NC, nccgroup.co.uk is not is vulnerable because it doesn't have a DMARC record, which means, and then here's the, here's the kicker, right? So yeah, sure, their email addresses might not come from that address, but if I go to ncc.co.uk, is that valid? Does it redirect me? Because if it does, like, they've got an alternate domain that's vulnerable. So I use that a lot as well. If they don't, fine. If they do, right. Like, some people buy all their alternate domains, but, um, yeah, it's different. Oh, God. Hold on. You have to give me a second. Context. You want to do context? I think context are okay. Yeah, so nccgroup.co.uk isn't right. Let's do context is. I'm Googling these domains because I want to get the exact domains. Um, txt for short oh no yeah context are vulnerable to subdomain spoofing so let's do context so we're going to donaldjtrump.com mate if donald trump is is like is like if if donald trump's like domain is like solid that would be so funny <laughs> So the uh, subdomain is people's non. I just checked. Uh, so the primary domain is quarantine, but the subdomain is sp equals non. So let's do uh, context, right? Why not? Uh, da -da -da -da. So let me set up a new sending profile. We're going to do context. Uh, Context information security. I don't know. No reply at. Oh god. Uh, god, let me get the domain again. I got the wrong domain. Contextis.com. It is kind of nuts how easy this is and how well this works. <laughs> this kind of threw me for quite a long time. I'm just like, this shouldn't be this easy. I thought this problem was solved, um, but it isn't. So non reply at security.contextis.com. Gonna send the campaign out. I, I mean this is I'm pretty sure this is gonna work. It pretty much works every time. Uh, test three. J I'm gonna send it from context is, send it to my main group again. Let's just check it on both of them. Oh god, slow, slow. There we go. Security.contextis.com, right? You go to contextis.com, right? Oh, God. So so the interesting thing as well, Context now would have got an alert that I've just spoofed their domain. Um, but remember, you go to Contextis. What would be interesting is if security.contextis was a thing. Dot, that is a thing as well. No, it's not. That was just wishful thinking, right? But yeah, like, you can see how easy it can be to um, sort of, like, trick people, which is quite nice. Uh, let me just come back to my all email. Yeah, that's PwC. We've already done PwC. Is that one? Context. Sorry, they're all called the same thing. So, yeah, Gmail as well. Gmail again, you know, it has this thing here. You know, look at the original... Um, you know, the DMARC failed, but the SP equals none tells it to ignore the policy anyway. Just, it's like, l allow the spoof. Um, and then if we actually come down here to the DMARC, uh, again, we have a, D a fake DMARC pass, which has been authentic, which has been, this has been signed by Google. So it says um, the uh, the domain con security context IS has given you a DKIM pass. It's giving you a DMARC pass, and then you get this fail down here, and the P is quarantine, but SP equals none. So that's how we spoof the subdomain. Uh, yeah, so like on GoDaddy, you just click manage domains and just change the name servers. This is the same for every every provider. You just change the name servers to uh, the Cloudflare servers. Someone else said some other domains. Let's try some other domains. Um, Accenture, I don't know what Accenture are. I'll have, to, I'll have to Google their domain. Uh, sorry, I, just, I want to be very careful that I don't accidentally expose any of my information. So, Essential.com. Let's see if Essential is vulnerable. 
cool, cool, cool. Uh, Dmark dot. You guys should be doing this for me now. Essential seem to be fine. They seem to be good. So D, so that so even though like even though they have a D mark record, it does fail. Like so, it is a failed D mark record. That is completely correct. Um, but the funny thing is, is that if you have that non, it says even if it fails, allow it. Or if the percentage is zero and it's like a quarantine, it says even if um, it fails, allow it. I know loads of them, right? So I've we've run against the FTSE 100. We've run against the top million domains in the world. We've run against the UK government. We've uh, run it against the US government. Um, you know what? All right, let me... The only one I know off the top of my head is the... <laughs> the only one I know off my head is the number 10.gov, but it's got a... Uh, it's it's a reject, but it has worked in the past. But this that, this now comes down to the brightness. So you can see number ten dot gov dot uk um, is a percent twenty five. So I'll try it. It may not work. It may just go to quarantine. <laughs> Sorry. So this this may go to quarantine. But like I said, this is a percent twenty five. So I'll try it. I'm not hundred percent that this will work, but we will give it a go. Cool. Uh, let me just do number 10 bojo dot buzzer at number 10 dot uk 25 I'll save that profile oh I should really be doing this on here shouldn't I um, go back to the campaign do a new campaign uh, tests for what I was it for you we will choose number 10.gov.uk, uh, main. So I think this gets through to Yahoo, but I don't think it gets through to uh, Gmail. Let me check. The funny thing is, is every time I'm doing this, I'm increasing the IP reputation of my server, uh, which is funny. So let me just go to Yahoo. Actually, it came off it. Uh, I believe that got blocked. I think correctly it got blocked as well. Yeah, so so because that percentage was 25, but this was reject, it got through. So this, this should have never have got to my inbox, but it got put to spam. So when this is less than 100, it says 75% of emails will, will go from reject to quarantine. If this was quarantine, it would have gone down to none and then it would have got through. So you're looking for like P equals quarantine or SP equals quarantine and a percent value less than 100. Uh, I'll just show you the example. So this did go to spam. Uh, oh no, wait, hold on. <laughs> That's the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, no, that did go to spam. That did go to spam. Yeah, I am right. Uh, cool. But, you know, that makes sense. That, that behaves as we expected, which is nice. Uh, any other domains we're interested in to test? looking through any questions I've got yep no DMARC record means spoofable um, so let me actually get so let's get the CIA ones the CIA ones a good example uh, let me just go back to my it's not that one yes so no DMARC record is the easiest one to spoof it looks the most realistic uh, oh god Oh, freaking out again. God, come on. Oh my god, my uh, Gmail. Horrible. What's it doing? There's some really, really wacky things you can do as well, I'll show you. Uh, 
Oh no, actually, no, no, it did. Cool. Um, actually, th no, actually, I think that one did get through. Oh, nice. No, I, I stand corrected. It seems that that one did get through on Gmail for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, Bozza at Boz at number 10.gov.uk did work. Um, that should have gone to spam. I'm surprised it didn't. Interesting. I have to find a CIA one now. Cool. So here's the, here's an example of no DMARC record. So no DMARC record means spoofable. I I could tell them I could send all the cabinet uh, an email from Boris Johnson telling them to open up the clubs. Yeah, that is possible. Um, if I go to my show here, so remember this is the CIA which doesn't have a DMARC record. It just has an SPF pass and has a DKIM pass. Um, it also has this ARC pass here. And then it has my forged DMARC pass, which says that CIA.gov has said the DMARC has passed. There's no DMARC record, um, but this is signed by Google. So this is the Google ARC signature to say this is this is correct, right? Google, I, don't, I don't know if Google should or shouldn't be saying this, but it makes it really difficult. Like if a normal user goes to this length to check the email, this looks absolutely legitimate. Other than the fact it's from Agent Smith and I said something stupid, right? One, two more things I will show you, which I find quite funny. <laughs> this is this always gets me. Gmail.com doesn't have a DMOT record. Um, so if I send a record from myself to myself. So just send that uh, first spell that right. To save my profile, I will send myself an email to myself. Do you test five? Uh, Gmail. Send it to myself. I don't. I don't know why Gmail doesn't have um, a Gmail record. It just doesn't. I have to be careful here. I'll load. I've got, uh, where is my mail? Oh, I've got the wrong one again. Muppet. <laughs> so. <laughs> Gmail seems to give like a really low score, like a, like it gives a really high score to its um. Users who register will get at Gmail emails, but they shouldn't be getting subdomain emails. If that's how Gmail's configured, yeah. So I, I just don't want to show you. So this is my email inbox. I have one new one, and it says that I've sent myself an email. But that was a spoof email. So Gmail, when you send an email to yourself, it seems to permit you to send emails to yourself. It gives it a really high reputation score, even though it's fake. Now, if I come in here, it does give you a message, which is funny. Um, it doesn't always do that. Uh, but again, it will say that I've got the um, cheeky breaky thing there. But again, uh, because <laughs> Gmail has SP, SP equals none for Gmail, it has a pass with SPF, a pass with DKIM. And a DMARC fail. What is the DMARC policy? Uh, so we have we obviously have our fake DMARC pass, and we have a DMARC policy that says that gmail.com is non but quarantine um, subdomain. The final thing I want to do is I will go to a website called I believe it's called Mail Tester. What we're going to do is we're going to see what a mail testing uh, service thinks about our email. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here. Uh, let's go to GoFish. I don't need to have a sending profile. I'm going to add a user and group here. Just going to add to my group. So that's the testing mail server. I'm going to set up a new campaign. Do you test six? Going to send it from the CIA. It's the first one on the list, and then we're just going to launch this campaign. So this should get through all my email inboxes, which should be nice. 
it always does. It just always gets through my email inboxes, which is nice. Oh God, Gmail, that's so annoying. Yeah, got through to Gmail again. Every time, got through to Yahoo, every time. So if I test my score, <laughs> the uh, this this is an entirely forged um, email from CIA.gov. It gets a 9.9 .9 out of 10 for reputation. It's like, oh, you know, you've got a really good reputation. The only thing it flags you on is that the, the envelope address and the from address, the contents address are different. So yeah, like it gets a really high score. If you put like malicious things in this email, the score, like I think we tested it and it drops from like 9.9 .9 to 9.8. Like it was still incredibly high because people falsely trust the SPF record and people falsely trust the DKIM record. Is everyone happy with what I've shown them today? What else do you want? Yeah, email is broken. Does everyone realize how easy it is to actually spoof emails? <laughs> like most domains of like a lot of people. Excellent. Um, I like, I, uh, I'll be, I guess the source code will come out and then I'll put this link up here so you can like follow through. Um, yeah, just don't, don't open emails, right? A crypto exchange. Good question. Has anyone got a good crypto exchange to, to modify? Uh, I, I'll put it on YouTube. Binance, Binance. So Binance Vulnerable. It's it's one of those things. I would th I probably not because they probably get pwned. Binance uh, Coinbase. Let's try them. Just want to make sure they got the right ones. Is there like is there another one? Is there like is there like Coin as the Binance's quarantine? Is there like a .co.uk for Binance as well? So, so there's a Binance.co.uk. Oh, I guess that's different though. Coinbase. Just trust this. Dan.coinbase.co.uk. How weird. Okay, so obviously someone's bought that and is trying to flog it. So... So Coinbase is reject. Kim Jong Un. I don't know IRS. Let me check the IRS. Congress is vulnerable. All right, cool. Uh, let's have a look at the IRS. IRS.gov. Um, maybe. Oh, no, they're not vulnerable. Anyone, anyone that like has, like you would expect to spoof straight away, probably isn't vulnerable. But that only accounts for like one to ten percent of people. Like everyone else tends to be vulnerable. Cool. Ine dot com. I don't know what Ine is though, but I'll try it. INE.com, uh, sorry, not INE.gov, INE.com. Is that the training people? Oh, no, INE are fine. They're fine. Is there a .co? Let's try .co UK, see if they're vulnerable. But then I guess this depends if this actually resolves to an address, right? No, it doesn't. No, INE are vulnerable. Sorry, mate. Yeah, but you know, play with it. Um, you get your hands on the source code, set it up, and then you should be able to just mess around and spoof a bunch of people. Pretend to be them. It makes red teaming a lot easier when you can pretend to be their boss. I found. Uh, I think Spotify.com is uh, code UK is vulnerable. Spotify.code UK doesn't have a domain, um, and I believe this actually redirects as well. Yeah, so Spotify.co.uk uh, is vulnerable, but it redirects to .com. Um, you can use my name if you like, but that's not my that's not my domain. <laughs> Isn't he the personal trainer? Um, GitHub, I believe, is vulnerable as well. GitHub.co.uk is vulnerable. 
Does GitHub do Yeah, so github.co.uk does resolve as well. What do you mean if the SP record was omitted? Like a DMAR, I think it I think it defaults to none. So if it's just like DMARC equals V1, or v, uh, like version equals DMARC1, I think, I'm pretty sure that's still vulnerable. <laughs> Amazon, like like the fan companies, like Facebook, like Amazon's got about 20,000 domains. If you can find one that is vulnerable, you can do it on. Uh, yeah, so like if you define the P record, um and not the SP record, like if there isn't an SP record present, then it will default to, to the P. Uh, and the, it's the same with like percent. If percent isn't included, it's default. By default, they're secure. You have to explicitly either tell them to allow spoof email or tell them to only check like 0% zero, like check zero of your domains or your emails. You have to explicitly configure it to be insecure. But a lot of people do do that. Like, I guess people are terrified of email not being received. You wanted DuckDuckGo. Interesting question. Oh, God. Uh, DuckDuckGo.com. Try them. <laughs> Is it really? Oh, this is a good example. This will get through. Let's let's do DuckDuckGo, right? So, so DuckDuckGo have said, quarantine all our emails, but allow 99% of spoof email addresses through. Well, why not? Why not Why not use it, right? Um, oh, I think my cat wants to get in. Let me let her in. Yeah, she's coming. Oh, cool. Let's do DuckDuckGo. Good example. Ah, oh, I love my cat. She's amazing. Her name is Ozzy. Uh, duck, duck, go. So there's a ninety-nine percent chance this is going to work. Uh, fix twenty-five. Oh, she's on my desk. Fifth, what do you mean? What do you mean fifty fifty? God, bloody thing. Um, let me do this. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, let's do test seven. Uh, let me. I literally can't see my screen. It's just in the way. Uh, we said duck duck go. Send it to all everyone. <laughs> Yahoo again. Uh, so this should go to spam. Uh, it didn't. It went straight through, mate. Got through. There we go. Didn't go to spam. So that means that DuckDuckGo explicitly permits. You want me to do it's github.co.uk, not github.com. Uh, github.com isn't runnable but github.co.uk is uh, so if you do uh, github.com that's run that's not vulnerable but co.uk is but the important thing is is like .co.uk redirects to uh, so this does redirect to .com so you can actually like send emails like that uh, so if I just come to test gofish uh, the new sending profile for .co.uk Uh, no reply at github.qk. Go back to campaigns. Oh God, stupid cat. Uh, let's do GitHub. 
Try that again. Should have got through. I'm using Yahoo just because it's not as likely as GitHub, uh, as, as uh, Gmail at the moment. So yeah, that got through. GitHub.uk is fine. And then, like I say, like a lot of a lot of people will just like take this address and then just copy and paste it, um, and it you know it goes to GitHub. Uh, they'll look at the the raw message, and then they'll look for things like uh, DKIM, SPF, SPF. You'll have like an arc signature down here as well, so like you'll have a, DM, a fake DMARC pass as well. So these are things that people look for. Uh, what do you mean a full GitHub repository? This is just a, this is just an email. Like like our tool, like the tool, um, the tool is on GitHub. <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, you will soon, right? Soon enough. This is like just the demo video. I didn't I didn't want to give it tonight because I didn't want people like stopping me and asking questions about oh I, you know I've broke this I've broke that. I just want to do it in one go and then give it to people. Then people can go through and configure it. Anyway, yeah. Um, I think email security is pretty bad at the moment. Um, so some people do know that this is possible. I don't think anyone's done it with ARC before. I think we're the first ones that's done it with the ARC pass and like the forged ARC signature, um, which is nice. Um, and a lot of a lot of companies like Mimecast and like Proofpoint and people they are correct in what they say. So they they do know what they're talking about, but they kind of wave their hands and go, "Oh, it's sophisticated. Oh, it's a you know, it's like APT level threat." It isn't like it, like as we've demonstrated, we've made a tool that just does it in like one click almost. You, you just obviously you just need your Cloudflare, um, and you need your correct uh, hosting provider. <laughs> so um, yeah, so the archives, so we actually didn't write much code ourselves. We just did a lot of configuration. So we patched some stuff to make it work. Um, so what it does is, you know what, if, if I actually draw this, this is probably better if I draw this. It's OBS. So I guess my whiteboard. No, nope, I don't want to do that. That would have been silly. Oh, my pen, where's my pen gone? I've actually lost my pen. I got it. Cool. See you, Paul. So what this actually does, is it? No, oh, right. Okay, I didn't know that. I, I do know there is some vulnerable uh, IP addresses. On, oh, sorry, there is some blocked IP addresses on uh, DigitalOcean. But just just go and find one that isn't blocked. So the way the way the tool works, there is a postfix server which handles all your email. This removes a bunch of headers. There's like a bunch of headers it removes. Um, it does a bunch of the configuration. There is an rspam d server. So this is rspam d. Um, this has, this does your dkim. It does your arc. Uh, this is postfix. So what happens is we have a gofish server over here. So this is gofish. You generate a email in GoFish. It sends it to Postfix twenty five. Remember, this is all in Docker, so um, this isn't this relay isn't on the internet. It sends the email address from this GoFix server to Postfix. This Postfix server sends it to RSpamD. It adds the DKIM record and it adds the forged uh, ARC record. It sends it back for Postfix. Then Postfix sends it on. And this is this is generally how it works. We also have the option to use SendGrid as a forwarder, because um, SendGrid doesn't uh, check uh, sending domains. If you have an API key, this should work. And then when you're the receiving server over here, uh, you get an SPF pass, you get a DKIM pass, uh, you get an ARC pass. And you get our forged, remember it's forged, DMARC pass because of the uh, arc. Is everyone cool? Everyone happy with everything I've talked about? Anyone want me to go over anything else?
Yeah, my API key, mate. Uh, not um, so. So what we've you can like include an image in the in GoFish. So like GoFish is a tool. So we didn't write GoFish, obviously. Uh, we're just using it. So like in GoFish, you can basically just say there's like a little image in here, and if it gets opened, yeah, one by one pixel image. If it gets opened, it will like send a message back to say it's been opened. GoFish is amazing as well because you can like import. Um, so like here's a really good example. So if I just switch back to my main, so let me go find this. So I have to be careful again. So we actually looked at pen testing academy. Um, <laughs> this one's quite funny. So like you can import email addresses with uh, Postfix, which is really nice. So if I go to pen testing academy, I'll show you. Yeah, like you don't. I mean, like this is just going to increase the success rate of phishing. Which is nice. Like, like it, you know, if you could, if if like on a red team engagement, you only get like five percent of people, like clicking your email. I'm hoping this will make it more like 75, 85 percent of people, because the, the email is going to be coming from your boss, so it's going to be coming from like your CEO, it's going to be coming from marketing. Like, it's going to look legitimately like a, an email address. And then because people think the email addresses are protected, at least from what the user sees, um, it's just going to be opened, or it's going to have a much higher success rate. This this makes me laugh. Like, um, <laughs> I think it's this one. So if I go to Pen Testing Academy, oh that didn't copy. So if I look at Pen Testing Academy, right, one of these is fake and one of these is real. So what you do is you copy the in GoFish. You can import emails and you copy the raw email in. So this here is the the, the, the legitimate email. So this is all legitimate. Um, and this is from Pentester Academy, feedback at binarysecuritysolutions.com via gmail mcsv.net, right? This is, the, this is the real email. The fake email looks like this. In, in So even though it says did not encrypt, we fixed this in the latest version. But um, Pentesting Academy, but it actually comes from pen, feedback at pentestingacademy.com. The other one, like the actual legitimate Pentesting Academy emails didn't even come from Pentesting Academy. Which I find really funny. But like our fake emails do come from Pen Testing Academy. Like our fake emails look more legitimate than the real emails. Like if you want if you want us to pwn a bunch of security people, just like say, oh you know, Pen Testing Academy, like 95% off, you know, whatever it is, and send it from pentestingacademy.com. Like. Yeah, just Docker, just Docker and Docker Compose. Yeah, that's all you need, and it'll just work. It'll just it'll download all the images for you, and it'll just work, Pro provided you've got the API keys in the domain. I am going to stop the recording there.